Hey everybody, it's Coach Richard Wharton here with OnlineBikeCoach.com and I'm really privileged today to have a longtime guest, teammate, and client by the name of Mark Corrala. And Mark uh, has been, uh, uh, we were on a, a club together for about uh, seven or eight years. Uh, he's a well-accomplished master's cyclist and uh, Mark uh, contacted me this morning with a uh, quick history of some events that occurred and it compelled me to want to come out and, and, and have this uh, discussion today. So Mark, why don't you go ahead and give me a quick, uh, a, a quick overview of um, you know, your cycling history, how we met, and uh, uh, let's talk about you know, that first big event maybe that just happened in uh, mid-2016. Mid um, and then we'll zoom in on that information using Exert. Uh, thanks, Richard. Um, nice to be here with you this morning. So I've been cycling for 30 years, started originally to lose weight, which worked, and then gradually, you know, started riding with more accomplished riders and having different goals, et cetera, et cetera, like the, doing a, my first century and whatnot. Um, I started having some issues on the bike back in towards the end of 2015 which prompted me, you know, to uh, get with my cardiologist uh, in January of 2016 and failed a stress test. Um, they stented me. Uh, it was my left ascending main was like 80% blocked. Um, got back on the bike. Um, everything was great. Uh, but what I didn't know is I was a Plavix non-responder. And also the stent developed scar tissue, which, you know, I had started training with you that year uh, in the summer because I wanted to do the senior uh, games up in um, um, the Huntsville senior games up in St. George, Utah. So as you recall, working out with you, um, you know, I had that first episode, you know, where I fell off the, the trainer bike and, and you and Dr. Cribs, um, you know, did rescue breathing and CPR and then... <clears throat> Five days later, they did a quadruple bypass. Okay, was... let's stop there and let's take a look real quickly. I'm sorry to interrupt you like that, but um, I'm going to go ahead and go to a quick screen share. And there we go. So let's talk about this. This is fascinating because you and I were using uh, an early version of Exert. And if we think about this, we began our, works, uh, our work together in June. Now, you do remember, here we are in uh, April, uh, in the early days of, of, of 2016. Repeat again, when did you have your first, uh, your stent bypass? That was January. And I don't think uh, I had the, uh, the, the software back then. Right, we were still working on it and things yeah. like that. But this is really, really good because you took the time off. Again, it's kind of like getting kicked by a mule and um, got yourself back into shape. And here is a zoom of your yeah. original spring progression right there. So what we're gonna do is just look at the threshold line just for the sake of simplicity. You've got a 203, you've got a 207, and then right around mid-April, which is high bicycle rally season, you started kicking in with a 215, all right? Then you and I began to work together. Yeah, there was a power meter issue. That's why there's no data there. That's exactly right. I do remember that now. And oh gosh, power meter uh, hiccups and headaches continue to plague us. Now, this is where it gets interesting. If we turn around and look at the growth in your protocol uh, from early June, we've got a silver medal breakthrough uh, with a five minute power of 266. We've got a gold medal breakthrough with a five minute power of 286. We've got another gold, minute, uh, gold medal breakthrough. We've got a big, big breakthrough in July, but right around July, things started to go a little bit south. And if right. I remember correctly, um, you were doing the workouts, but we just weren't able, I think we were, you know, this was the beginning of indications. Is this right? Right. Yeah. And sadly, the day that we had the, 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 the crisis, 
uh, was right, you know, it was kind of like right over here on a Monday. Right there, that Monday the 29th. Yeah, That's Monday the 29th. Here's a 70 point studio. day right here. And what I recall from that is you said, you know, Rich, I just don't have it. I just don't have it. I can't understand what's going wrong. I just don't have it. We didn't know it was your heart. We right. just thought it was, you know, f- f- mental fatigue. Okay. And so we were shutting the workout down and that's when the, um, that's when the first episode occurred. So that leads to a uh, prolonged period of recovery and you were compelled to get back on your bike, which is the most important thing out there. Okay. That's, that's, that's kind of your lifeblood. And that fast forwards us to uh, what was the date in 2017? Uh, it was like early October. Early October. Okay. So here we are. I'm flashing forward. I'm flashing forward. I'm flashing forward. And here we go. So Mark's had his uh, uh, replacement stent installed and, um, and he's on different medications. Is that right? Yeah. Perfect. And here we go. This is all rehab. That was from the bypass, Richard. So the, yeah. the stent actually stopped working. They okay, so the stent stopped working. working. Then we had the bypass. Right. And um, and and look at your look at this beautiful training load line. Your growth is coming back. And yeah, we didn't have as many gold medals or or breakthroughs. But you know, again, heart surgery is still like getting kicked and kicked like a mule. And you also had some some lung scarring. Uh, from the from the previous episodes where we'd had to perform some CPR and we broke your ribs. But here we are. We're at 60 to 70 points per rolling 22 days. Your numbers are actually looking pretty darn good. And then tell us what mm. happened in late and mid in mid 2017. I was training again for the senior games and um, I had the episode in my office. And yep. that's when they, they put a defibrillator in. Got it. So here we are back up. Here's the 234. And if we go back in time to 2016, it was, you know, in the same range within six watts and things like that. And so, you know, that leads to a prolonged, um, you know, recovery as well. And for the next, you know, uh, you know, for the next six or seven months, we don't see as much of a recovery uh, and, and kind of go from there. So now here we are and look at this beautiful, beautiful growth. Now tell us what happened. This is kind of exciting. Tell us what happened um, in, in 2018. Um, Did you retire? Was that when you retired? I retired in 19. August. In 19. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Well, I still think this is a beautiful growth chart and I see all these silver medals and this growth pattern and, and look at these, look at these stepping stones of, of threshold. You get right back up to 230 in the middle of 2018. And we go into the fall of 2018 and here is a new breakthrough of 237 Watts. Okay. Now, again, we're just looking at one metric right now. Here's a 237 right here in early January of 2019. And it start, you know, we go into the winter season. Here we keep going. And here we are. So you retired in 2019. Is that right? Yeah, in at the end of August. At so you can see August. that I'm pretty consistent here. Yeah. And this is even better. This is where our, this just makes my heart glow right here because you've got. You've got a nice steady progression. You're pulling yourself up to about 70 plus points per day. And there was and a vacation there in December. It, it took a vacation. Uh, a you, went, you went salmon fishing, right? Uh, no, we went to Israel. and Israel. In, uh, Perfect. Yeah, that's right. I remember now. Okay, perfect. Exactly. So uh, take a needed break. Nothing wrong with that. And here we are uh, in February of 2020. And we've got, you know, we're back up to almost where we were at uh, 227 watts, but now as we migrate out, what we see, here's some beautiful, beautiful growth, but right around June, things started to change again. Tell me what happened. Well, 
you know, my wife passed away on the 23rd of April <laughs> while yeah, on the bike that. ride. Um, yeah, I came back riding. And then in the summer, I don't know, I just, all of a sudden things started getting really hard again. And, you know, saw the cardiologist. Um, they put me back in the cath lab in September. You know, he saw blockages, you know, but didn't do anything that he wouldn't let me ride in September because I had to get in the cath lab. So he took the scan there the 1st of September, put me in the cath lab, the end. He didn't stent anything, uh, but he cleared me to ride and things were not improving. And, you know, I had a meeting with him three weeks ago and that's when I took my tablet in and I showed him this and I said, this is not age related slowdown. Something is going on and put me back in the cath lab and my circumflex was 99% blocked. They stented it. My main was 50. They stented it. And so you see the big circle there on that Tuesday. That was my first ride after the stent. Here. That's absolutely amazing. So you took this information. How far back did you go? Uh, when I met with him, I think I went back uh, for a year. But okay. okay. So let's switch this over and switch to the one year history. Let it repopulate. And we can see a I mean, steady 20% drop in power. It's for yeah. no reason. Right. And that's just it. That's the important part that, 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 that makes this so relevant is, you know, ideally, if you had stayed up with your, I mean, look at your volume, your volume really hasn't changed all that much. But then all of a sudden, you know, again, things start, start going down and the, the doctor puts you on forced rest before you can go in. Right. Then gives you an assessment test in September. And one more time, did he clear you or did he? Yeah. So the beginning of, okay. So I, I was fishing in August that, that blank spot was. And that's well, fine. We need rest okay. and recovery for sure. So on this, right. The beginning of September, they do us, they do a scan. Actually, it was a stress test. And he saw something and he said, no exertion until we get you in a cath lab. So that, so I was in a cath lab, then he freed me to get back on the bike right there. Okay. And, you know, not much change. I mean, I'm struggling on every single ride. Can't take poles anymore. Can't do a pace line. And, you know, saw him three weeks ago and that's when I showed him the data and I said, something's wrong. This is fascinating because if we look at this, um, let's turn off all of the other metrics and we'll start with threshold because that's what people seem to remember most as their, as their, as their paradigm. So in May, you've got a 228. Now, how old are you again? I'm 66. 66. You've got 30 plus years to go. And so you've got a, you know, a decent plateau, but right around here, you take your break. It falls off a cliff. It falls off a cliff. This was your vacation. You should have, you know, you were expecting to come back up again. You've got a silver medal right there. Let's turn, um, focus on, no, nope, let's turn uh, threshold on again. Just a second. Okay, it's not gonna let me do it on this chart, but this was around the time that you had your, uh, your stress test. He then puts you on another forced rest. Right. And even though your volume returned, your threshold continued to decline. So Correct. we go from a 200 all the way down into the 180s and 190s. And you just, no matter how hard you pushed, you just couldn't, couldn't pull it up. Now, let's look at the HIE. HIE is going up, even as threshold is going down. And that's because you were, you know, you were doing the harder work in strain, right. thinking this is the only way to pull everything up by the suspenders. Is that right? right. Correct. Got it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when did you know that you were going to go back into the, uh, uh, for a surgical intervention? Um, I'll tell you. Okay. Yeah. 
hang on a second. Okay. So that was the 20th. So on um, January 5, January I had 5. the meeting with a cardiologist. And that's when he, he told me that we were going to fix it. Got it. Okay. So let's take a look. So all of the month of December, you're fighting yourself, essentially. Correct. And let me go back to the screen share. So here we are in the, that's July. Let's go forward, forward, forward. And there is, let's go to September right there. Okay. So right around the, in December, you're fighting and you're fighting and you're fighting and you're fighting and you're just basically fighting yourself trying to do this because let's face it, this is not just physical therapy. This is emotional therapy. Okay. You've survived two heart attacks and you've also lost your wife and then you retired. So, you know, this is, I gathered, this is uh, psychosomatic. This is, this is you, you know, healing yourself. Am I right? Correct. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, it's just, it just, it's sad to see, but at least this time you were subconsciously aware that you needed to be showing this to your, to your, your medical professionals. Is that right? Correct. Fantastic. Let's zoom back into the XPMC chart and let's talk about the last two weeks because this was surgery nowadays is, 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 is a lot less, um, uh, traumatic. Am I right? Are you able to recover and get back on the bike more quickly? Yeah. Yeah. They went through my wrist this time. So great. So it was microsurgery. They did, uh, all the necessary, uh, repairs and replacements. On the 20th here, of January. On the 20th of January. So you got one last good ride in. You got an XSS of 186 points. So yep. this was a good day on the bike. And, and look at your training load. Even in January, your training load was 70 points because your threshold was declining. Remember, because of kilojoule inflation, the more fit you get, the more kilojoules you have to burn in order to get the same XSS. And so here we are right back here. And it's, it's three days old. And we are back at, it was a near miss. I'm not going to worry about that at all, but we've got a five minute power of 239. And where's my threshold? 187. Okay. Well, but my power is still 40 Watts off. Again, it's day two. All right. I think that as soon as we get you back on, it's going to, it's going to grow back up and be back in the two thirties and two forties with an HIE in the mid twenties. Now, I guess the question I want to ask is, um, considering our proactive nature now, how do we prevent um, going back in for surgery? How do we go out and, and um, you know, better prepare for more, you know, what I would call micro interventions instead of major interventions? Well, you know, unfortunately, Richard, I have both of the genes that cause plaque where the okay. general population has one of the two genes. Okay. And my HDL um, molecules are one third the normal size. Got it. So I have so, two genetic strikes against me. So, um, you know, he's changed my statin to something that's a little stronger because he, even though my LDL is 67, he says between 30 and 50, there are some good studies that show reversal of plaque. So I have to do everything I can to reverse plaque because my body is inclined to create plaque. And the this, HTL molecules being small, right. I need a lot more of them to move the junk. And, you know, it's hard for me to get my HDL number up even with all the exercise. That I'm sure, doing. exactly. And of course, you know, you're a huge salmon eater, so you eat right. Um, you've lost weight. You're, uh, uh, you're, you're living the holistic lifestyle. You're still, you're still doing some resistance training as is appropriate for everyone. And um, I, again, outside of this, psychologically, I think, you know, you're, you know, this is, this is, you know, a, 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 this has been a new lease on life. So, um, I would again, look at it as a glass half full and I can't wait to work with you for the next three or four months to move this back up to 230, move that HIE back up to 20 plus and, 
and move the LTP up, we didn't even talk about the LTP, you could probably ride all the way to the state line and back from North Texas because you're going to be so economical. That's really, really exciting. So uh, while, I'm all, while I'm concerned and, and, and saddened that, that we've had to go through this, what I really want to emphasize to people on the Exert Daily Ditty is this could be you. You can be one of those folks that says, hey, you know, I haven't felt 100% and my numbers keep dropping, maybe it's time I went in and had a blood test, or maybe I went, should go in and, and, and go see, uh, you know, Dr. Cooper and take a, take, a, take a stress test. Because if you show this data to a learned medical or physiological professional, they're going to know that something is up. And uh, again, I don't think any other metric uh, system can show what we've been able to display here today uh, without, you know, other caveats and, and guesses. Because the beauty of the FTP system inside of Exert itself is it, that's it. If you really, really want to try to break through and get a new FTP and get a new HIE, you got to put yourself under a lot of strain. Yeah, and it's it's not per, it's not a perception. These are these are factual numbers. I mean, I got a left right power meter. I mean, th this is hard undisputable data. Yeah, hard undisputable data, and that is the crystal. Uh, uh, it's a crystal ball. It literally tells you what you think you're capable of. Let's hop in real quick just to this most recent ride. And we're going to pop into the power duration curve. And this is where things get exciting. Do you think today that you could pull 271 watts over three minutes? Yeah. Okay. Let's go get it. Because when we do these kinds of efforts, and again, we're in the clear now, right? we got a doctor's note and we're in the clear. Yeah. Okay. Let's go achieve these on a seven to 10 day basis and let's get these breakthroughs and boost this HIE and then work the polarized training that we've been working on for 12 years now. Now that we've got visual cues on our Garmin head units to give us that information and let's get you back to where you were and let's add some years of quality to that. Uh, to that to that uh, uh, cycling realm that you so enjoy. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah, pull up right. pull up yesterday's ride. Absolutely. Let me give me one second here. Because while I did feel pretty good Tuesday, I felt great yesterday. Okay, I'm going to take a look real quick. Pull in Thursday. And by the way, you're two hours ahead of me, so it's after this conversation. You got to go ride. Here we are. Look at that, 199 points, 1,150 calories. We've got a 1050 kilojoule workload and you averaged, see, this was a great day on the bike. Yeah, we never Typical, stopped for I'm sorry? two and a half hours. Yeah, 2.5 hours, less than seven days after uh, an invasive surgical procedure. And we've got plenty of orange, if we look, uh, focus duration is in the three minute range because the numbers are artificially low. Okay. It, it, it's, it's applying appropriate decay. And now it's your job when you feel good to go back out and perform some intervals that will have you achieving that breakthrough. There's nothing better than having that little gold medal on top of that Garmin right there and seeing this and feeling the sense of accomplishment that occurs with this effort and you got really close let's zoom in here's a little spike where you you were chasing the dragon just a little bit oh i love these and i know this road this is one of our favorite roads we used to ride this road let's look yep there it is the three sisters right there you see that isn't that perfect so we, again Let's again, we, you know, you'll relearn how to apply yourself here so that instead of spending it and then, and then losing it, we can bank it and then spend it and cross the Rubicon, cross the Rubicon of MPA. And again, let's stretch the heart a little bit because you know, the heart's a muscle and it's going to atrophy as we don't, as we do and don't do certain intensities, but absolutely. 
Let's go back in when you feel good and we'll perform some custom specific intervals and controlled circumstances, get those breakthroughs, reset the signature and use that to go get more XSS. Sound good? Yeah. Great. Mark, I really want to thank you for taking the time with me on this impromptu approach. Um, I know it was a short notice, but I'm really grateful. And everyone out there in exert land, uh, thanks for watching and um, enjoy the ride. Thanks, Richard. Take care.